Taking a correct intraoral periapical radiograph for the implant restoration. This is such a simple mundane topic, but it's of such an importance to every dental team. Hi, I'm Dr. Jin Kim, a periodontist and a co-director of GDIA. If you look at a case like this, we have a series of panoramic radiographs laid on top of each other. Uh, you can see the consistency of the images because of the very nature that the patient is placed in the same spot with the same jaw position each and every time. Now this may not be true for the periapical radiograph. Let's walk through this case quickly. This is a non-restorable lower left single molar that is being replaced. The tooth was carefully removed with minimal flat manipulation. A drilling maneuver is done to be able to ensure an implant position in the immediate site in the center. An implant of a fairly wide diameter. Uh, this is a SAVE model from Dentist Line, 5.5 uh, implant diameter is being placed carefully into the prepared site. Here the driver is being used to secure the implant with a very good initial stability in an ideal position. And the position is being verified here with this yellow plastic structure which is really a abutment analog. It's a template uh, for an abutment to be able to tell what size cuff, what size abutment can be used in the future. This is a product called Pro Kit. And uh, grafting was appropriately done with sticky bone and concentrated growth factor in a press form was packed around the defect site with the appropriate sutures. And a few months later, healing is uneventful, and we have a very nice, healthy gingival sulcus associated with the implant and the surrounding structure. At the right moment, uh, that predetermined uh, stock abutment, in this case, a product called Sol, S-O-L-E, Sol abutment, which is a one-piece um, prefabricated abutment that is of the exact same dimension as the try-in is being utilized and the abutment is being torqued in here. Once that is placed, it's simply a matter of provisionalizing and going to the ultimate definitive restoration. So here we have a relatively simple protocol that I use on a regular basis, a plastic template or what we call a core has been prefabricated um, before the appointment that is fitted tightly in the mouse and simply a quick setting uh, rest, uh, material is being added. Namely, this is a material called Alike from GC uh, America. It's being added, let uh, allow to polymerize in the mouse, uh, the contact, the occlusion is being made, and simply polished and adjusted and put back into the mouse with a simple cementation technique. Now, the beauty of this is, remember, this is a second appointment after the initial implant placement uh, several months later. Uh, there's no need for a second stage surgery because implant was done as a one-stage surgical protocol. The abutment has, was pre-selected so that no time is wasted on uh, purchasing or sizing the abutment. We know exactly the abutment. Uh, the provision was being cemented in and the patient walks away uh, in the second procedure date, uh, being able to function and chew right away. And then ultimately, the same size uh, abutment is kept in the mouse, impressioning technique is done, and a definitive restoration is being made. And this was done by Dr. Connie Choi. She actually happens to be my wife, and she did the restoration. And this is a three-year, very stable follow-up of the same case. So you can see here, uh, the restorations had three years with the corresponding periapical radiograph that verifies Fairly good implant position, the abutment being intact, no cement being detected around the restoration, fairly decent contact, and so forth. So let's review what the periapical radiographs look like. This was immediately after the implant placement, and this is immediately after the provisionalization stage, several months later, and we let tissue mature for a few months, and then the definitive restoration was delivered and cemented uh, in this radiograph. And then further follow-up is being done. Now, let's compare the earlier radiographs. What you see on the screen are two different images of uh, only a couple of months apart, but let's take a look at this. The level of the crystal bone distal to the implant 
seems to be in two different places. One is a lot more crystal or superficial, one seems to be a lot more deeper or inferior. Why is that? And then we compare the two images, one from uh, July of 2016 and one from October of 2017. And it apparently looks as if a lot of bone grew in what seems to be a span of just over a year. Is that true or is that an artifact? And let's walk through that. That triangle that you see in the embrasure area clearly seems to be geometrically smaller. Again, does that mean bone actually grew? But when we compare these two images very carefully, the image on the right shows an oval at the interface, whereas the image on the right shows a straight line at the interface between the implant and the abutment. And same thing is observed in this pair of images. On your left, there's a straight line, and on the right, there's an oval at the interface between the implant and the abutment. What does that really mean? Let's look at this in a slightly different view concept. Here we see uh, the uh, object, namely the implant and the abutment connection. Uh, here we see the cone of the radiograph a source and a uh, target. It could be the film, it could be the plate uh, or sensor of some sort. And in this configuration where everything is laid out nice and straight, you would expect to see a straight line junction between the implant and the abutment, which is exactly what we want. However, when the implant is aligned out of the long axis, then you can see, very easy to understand this concept, you are going to pick up an oval image. And that oval image will happen when the implant is aligned in the frontal or the back area. So long as it's not aligned at 90 degrees to the x-ray source, we will end up with an oval. Now what people do not understand very well is not only is it the object or the target, the source or the actual plate, that doesn't really matter. Whether you have a plate placed in the wrong direction, in either direction, you will still pick up an oval so long as the implant is not perpendicular to the line of the radiograph. Therefore, one needs to understand that the key here is to have the radiographic source, namely the cone of the radiograph, x-ray, to be lined at 90 degrees to the long axis of the implant so that the beam actually bisects right through the junction and not at an angle. That's the key here. Uh, most of the clinical team members are doggone it about trying to get the uh, target, namely the plate or the sensor in the right place. Yes, it has to be in the right place, but the angle doesn't very, really matter very much. In other words, you can actually have a straight line configuration of the sensor, or the sensor could be tilted one way or another. It doesn't matter. The image still works out the same. So the only important factor, only important determinant, is the x-ray beam and the long axis of the implant. The one way to understand it is by looking at a line that is uh, set at a certain angle. If you move your head up and down and look at the blind out the window, there's a point where you can see straight, or depending on what the angle is, you're going to be blocked by some of the vision. That's pretty much what it is. So whenever a radiograph is not aligned, there's going to be an artifact, and the image is going to be picked up one way or another. And we jokingly say this is the instant radiographic bone regeneration technique. If you take two images at two different angles, it will look as if bone grew in that space, which is purely an artifact. So here we have it, a case that's nicely done, a very simple, straightforward case like many of us do on a daily basis. But if you want to interpret how that case is doing, it could look as if there's a bone loss or there's a lot of bone gain, simply depending on how the assistant takes the radiograph. So I hope you learned a good lesson, and let's make sure the assistants are taking very decent radiograph, intraoral periapical radiographs with the right axis and the right angulation. So just like how a panoramic image consistently puts us in the right angle because the patient's always standing in the same position, in the same job position, we need to do the same for periapical radiographs. Thank you for watching this, and hope you can watch more of our short little videos like this. Thank you.